Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. Let's go into the service already in progress. Christmas ain't about home goods. Christmas ain't about those socks that you want to give your grandbaby in a $10 bill. Christmas ain't about a bow and decorating your house all night. Christmas ain't about none of that. Christmas is about the master and the maker of all creation. I'll just meet you on your street because sometime when you get to preaching too much word, hallelujah, you can lose some new converts. Well, let me meet you on your street, new convert. Help me, Holy Ghost. We was there. I'm not throwing stones at you as though I'm not suspect my own self. But I have been delivered by the help of the Holy Ghost. I remember the hustle and the bustle of Christmas, Lindsay. I remember shopping to one and two in the morning, Demetrius, trying to find the last store, planning out my itinerary, Jessica, to see who's going to close the latest so I can make sure I hit every store on my itinerary. If you close at 10, I got to frequent you before the store that closed at 12. If you close it at midnight, I have to visit you before the store that closes at 2 a.m. because I'm going to hit every store to make sure I have had every opportunity to buy every gift possible and charge it on every card I have only to be stuck with my lips sitting now on January the 2nd because I got a statement that said you owe Betty a new $4,764 on your credit card now we need your first payment of $384 come on January the 21st then I'm going back to the maker of creation and the master of creation and I'm saying, Father God, Brother Gerald, can you help your girl out? I know I didn't quite give you nothing on Christmas, but I gave everybody else something on Christmas. But if you can just get me out of this debt, God, I promise, oh, Equilla, I will not go back into debt again. I promise you, God, I'm going to give my tithe. I'm going to sow my seed, and God, I'm going to do better. And then the following year, I'm back at Macy's at 12 a.m., Delena. I'm back at Nordstrom's at 1 a.m trying to find a gift for somebody that probably don't even appreciate my efforts nor my endeavors, Nikki, and toss my gift to the side as though I did not work hard for that money only to find January the 5th. I'm upset again saying, God, have mercy, God. I shouldn't have got them that you go and visit your grandbabies and you see the kick kung fu kicker on the floor. The arm is broke off. Help me, Holy Ghost. The head is pulled off the action figure because they're babies and they don't understand what Christmas is but the church teaches the babies what Christmas is you're teaching your children that Christmas is about a toy you're teaching your children that if you don't get what you want then we have not had Christmas you're teaching your child everything but Jesus Christ the son of the living God but I come to serve notice on the devil since God has opened the eyes of our understanding we're not falling into the world's traditions of Christmas we know and we understand that Christmas is simply about Jesus Christ the son of the living God it's not about a toy it's not about pacifying everybody's fancy but it's having a good relationship Nina with the Christ the son of the living God it's understanding that if my God were to return today Nikki I'd be in the ark of safety whether I got a Christmas tree whether I got garland or whether I got mistletoe whether I got a turkey or whether I'm eating tacos on Saturday whether I got some the dressing or Londa's whether I'm having duck. It doesn't matter what the meal. I can have hot dogs on Sunday and it's still Christmas because God is God all by himself and whether you celebrate him the right way or not, he's still Christ and Christ alone. <laughs> Deacon Derek, we getting it twisted. Delana, I understand the world but I'm having a problem with the church. Having a problem with the church. Many have the audacity to, to point their little crinkly fingers at Apostle and myself as though we're preaching heresy because we're telling you to get out of the rat race. Get out of debt. The Bible says that the borrower is a servant to the lender. So why would I go deacon and borrow a whole bunch of money and my word says that I will be a servant to the lender and I declare that I have epigonosis. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. 
I'm moving on, Apostle. Right. I, I'm, 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 just, I'm just trying to understand. Hallelujah. Trying to understand what's going on with the church today. Hallelujah. Why, why, why we're not where we need to be on this because when you truly understand what Christmas is about you don't follow the ways of the world the Bible says I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your body as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed Romans 12 and 2 and be not conformed 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 to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind I understand the world DJ Des I'm having a hard time with the church but Elder Watson we said we got epigenosis Epigenosis is a deep, mature understanding of the word of God. One that moves from a superficial knowledge that moves you into wisdom that makes your choices different than they were when you'd only just had a superficial understanding. See, I knew a whole lot of things about God when I was in my teenage year. I knew a whole lot of things about God in my 20s and 30s, but it didn't transform my mind. It didn't transform my behavior. I knew the right scriptures. I even knew how to quote them, Elder Denise, but it did not transform it. But until you have a day of reckoning like the prodigal son, when you come to yourself, when your eyes are open, when the eyes of your understanding standing on light the things that you once thought you knew you not only know them but you're doing them you not only know them but you're doing them and until you do what you know you only have gnosis and not epigenosis and too many of us we know a whole lot of things we're not doing and if the Bible said to be not conformed to this world, hallelujah, but be transformed. Conform means to bend into the shape of. I'm conforming. I'm bending and blending. I'm conforming. I'm going along to get along. I'm doing what the Romans do. Be not bending and blending with the ways of this world, but be transformed means to morph into something different. To change your shape. That if the world is doing it this way, I'm not even suggesting, Lindsay, you come up with your own way of doing it. But Ladeja, I am suggesting that you do it God's way. <laughs> to remember Christ, Asia, in Christmas. Not be upset because you don't have what you thought you should have gotten. When is your birthday? Is anybody birthday December 25th? I, I don't want to be a Scrooge on nobody's birthday. Anybody born on December 25th? Hallelujah. Well, if it is, happy birthday to you, baby. Hallelujah. We want to say happy birthday to you. But Apostle always eloquently asks a poignant question. My birthday is August 3rd. And you all do a wonderful job celebrating me, bringing me a gift, honoring me. And the truth of it is, I would probably feel some kind of way I walked in here on August the 3rd. You got Steph to give. You got Watson to give. You got Alanda to give. You got Chris to give. You got Burton to give. You got Tia to give. Moya to give. Everybody got a gift but me. I thought it was my birthday, Delana. Well, as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. How do we understand this naturally? But when it comes to the things of God, we get so discombobulated. So dumbfounded and confused as though we don't understand this. We, we get all upset and talk about you are the Scrooge that stole Christmas. You, you the Grinch. Yeah, you a mean one. You a rotten, stinky, whatever he say, rotten, stinky banana, greasy back peel or whatever. Y'all know the, the Grinch music? And because we choose not to go that direction, don't make me a Grinch. It helps me, man of God, to understand that I truly understand what Christmas is about. And listen, let, 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 let me say this to you. Some of you say, Pastor, you said that because you don't have no biological grandbabies. So, well, you know, as grandparents, you get to, you, you're doting. 
You don't over the babies. It's an, an opportunity to live your second life again and do some things differently. But when my kids were teenagers, still in junior high, there were no gifts. They were still babies. And my, I mean, my boy is 6'6", six, six, he's still my baby. My daughter is 5'10", and she's still my baby. But when they were teenagers, young teenagers, barely hitting the cusp of teens, they didn't get no gifts. Because we had a revelation that this is not what Christmas is about. Christmas is about this. In the first couple years, yeah, you kind of had some lips hanging. Let let, let me just help somebody because somebody think that I don't know what I'm talking about. And and, and, and I said, well, wait a minute. Can can we just, can we get a little something? You know, the man of God done spoke. He said, this is the way it's going to be. That that this is not how we want to celebrate Christmas. And I'm thinking that's not the way you want to celebrate Christmas. But I kind of rather like all of the shopping and ripping and running and spinning. And yeah, I kind of rather like that myself. But I didn't tell him that, but I was sure faking it. Then the Holy Spirit says, you out of order. You out of order. What does buying somebody a gift have to do with me? And I said, see, what happened was, and I couldn't find an explanation, Elder Watson. And then the next year, it got easier. And then it got easier. And about the third year, it got right down right comical. We were sitting in the mall, Mother Burks, Deaconess Yolanda, Apostle. We go to the mall just to get a laugh. Y'all said, what you laughing at, Pastor? We sit, go to the food court, order our meal, with all our money still in our wallets, in our accounts. Don't owe anybody no money. Debt free. Well, you know the grace of God. I got to go there. Ain't we rich today? 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. You know the grace of God that though he was rich for my sakes, he became poor that through his poverty I might become rich. Somebody shout, ain't we rich today? For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for your sakes he became poor that through his poverty you might be rich. Somebody shout, ain't we rich today? Ain't we rich today? Had all my money in my account printing. I didn't have to get in line. Somebody stepping on my toe, Denise. You pulling on one end of the garment and I'm pulling on the other end. Getting out in this public arena and folk make, oh Lord, oh Lord, wait, what is going on, God? This thing that made me ugly. You, you ain't never been Christmas shopping if you ain't got ugly with somebody. You about ready to reach the last one because this going to finish your Christmas shopping. And here comes some person. Grab the item before you can get it. You done already called the store, asked them it was there. They told you it was there. They couldn't hold it, but it was there. And you drove halfway across town, Lena, spending $40 in gas just to get this last gift to end your Christmas list. And you get ready to step over and get it, and somebody snatches the gift, Jamed. You, you, you get so carnal, you forget you Pastor Sean, Deacon and Shalanda. You forget you the apostle, the bishop. Oh, oh my God. You got to catch yourself. If you've never been there, you ain't really Christmas shopped. And I said, God, I thank you for deliverance, God. I thank you for pulling me out of a horrible pit, oh God. I thank you when the end of the day came, I'm in nobody's line trying to get nobody a gift. My car is not filled with a whole bunch of bags and trash. I'm not up all night on Christmas Eve wrapping a whole bunch of gifts for a whole bunch of people who was just talking about me three days before I bought the gift. And then when Christmas came, Deacon, hallelujah, I'm too tired to fellowship with anybody because I was all up all night like Tom and Jerry with the toothpicks in my eyes and I can't stay awake during the fellowship. 
Monday came, my trash can is filled with trash, boxes, paper, wrapping, and everything else we can think of. I was so excited, nation. Had a regular trash can. A regular meal. Everybody's content. We laughed. We weren't la Listen, beloved, I, I'm not laughing at you. Hallelujah. I'm laughing at myself in times past. Somebody said, years ago. Years ago, years ago I was there my own self. But because God is a deliverer, hallelujah. He delivers those that want to be delivered. Hallelujah. You got to want to be delivered on the day. Hallelujah. He's not going to take you out of something and violate your will if you don't want to be delivered. Now, if you still like doing Christmas the way you like to do Christmas, that's between you and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But, 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 but don't be mad at us because we made a decision to stake a stand and honor Christ in Christmas. Hallelujah. Not only do we see the maker of creation and the master of creation, but we see the magnificence of creation. Verse number 12 says, but as many as received him, verse 12, John 1 and 12, he's the maker of creation, the master of creation. And then we see the magnificence of creation. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. What a magnificent savior who will share his divinity with humanity. Who loved us enough that he demonstrates his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Loved us so much so even in our imperfection, if we just received him, he gave us power to become the sons of God. To those that believe upon his name. I am a woman of God. You are a woman of God. You are a man of God. That makes me a little God according to Psalm 82 and 6. I am somebody because of the magnificence of creation. He came just to live and then to die. But before he died, he passed on a gift to us. He helped us to be partakers of his divine nature. This is why I celebrate Christmas. This is why I can't think of a better gift to give to my father because he gave me his best gift and out of his magnificence, he gave his son. And out of my best gift, I give everything that I am, everything that I have unto my Lord and my savior. There are no bars held. There is no private stash. There's no things that are off limit. Everything that I have, David declared it best when he says, All things come of thee, O God, and of thine own have we given thee. Everything that we've given unto you, God, is a result of what you've given to us first. That I'm not doing anything but simply giving you back what you gave me. And because you gave me your only begotten son, only begotten of the Father, the least that I can do at this time is don't put another God in your face. I'm talking about the magnificence of creation. There are other things, other gods that want to take his place. And you have to make a decision that I will serve no other God. Honor the Lord. Honor the Sabbath. Don't you put any graven images or put anything before God. Don't you put a Santa Claus before God. Because if it's about Santa Claus, then Santa Claus is your God. You have to understand that God is a jealous God. He don't want to have to compete with your Santa Claus, your Christmas wreath, your Christmas present. He don't want to have to contend with any of that. And when he gave us his best through the magnificence of creation, the least that we can do is give him our best. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed upon his name. So we see the maker of creation, the master of creation, the magnificence of creation. And then I love it in verse 14 where we see the marvel of creation. And the word was made flesh. That's a marvelous thing to me, Denise. The word was made flesh, deacon, and it dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as the only begotten 
father. of the Father, full of grace and truth. Yes, yes. That God sent from heaven his divine nature. We see deity coming down to humanity and begin to become like human nature. I believe that the Apostle Paul wrote it best when he says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. I'm talking about Philippians chapter 2 and 5. Who being in the form of God, who being word in form, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But made himself of no reputation and took on the form of a servant. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Wherefore, even the death of the cross, wherefore God had highly exalted him and given him a name above good. every name, yeah. that at the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, at the name of Christ, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, of things in the earth, and things under the earth, and every knee shall bow of things in heaven, of things in the earth, and things under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We have a savior who comes out of divinity, steps down into humanity, and we see the marvel of creation. We see a God who would knew no sin, became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. And you wonder why I celebrate Christmas, because he is the maker of creation because he is the master of creation because of the magnificence of creation yeah. because of the marvel of creation yeah. that a God who was self-sufficient in and of himself yeah. decided to come down and share his deity with mankind to raise us up help me Holy Ghost to sit in heavenly places that I can understand that I am somebody in this life that I'm not what they said that I was but I am everything that God said that I was Hallelujah. God gave me that opportunity to partake in his divinity Hallelujah. and that's why I celebrate Christmas because I'm not just some Sally Sue on the side of the world but the Bible declare that ye are gods for you are children of the most high God I know who I am when I step out of my house I know who I am and because I know who I am I celebrate Christ in December I celebrate Christ in January I celebrate Christmas in February I celebrate Christmas in March, April, and May. I celebrate it in June, July, and August. I celebrate it in September, October, and November because of everything he's given unto us, Elder Drew. That's the least that we can do is give it back to him. What a marvelous Savior who would die just for you and I. I truly believe that if it was just me, yes, he would have still died. Even though there are oh, something over 8 billion people that live in this world, I believe, T, if I was the only one he loved me just that much that he would have died just for little old me maybe I'm deluding myself but I choose to believe that I'm not he loved me just that much that he demonstrates his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life when I look at the marvel of Christmas when I look at the marvel of Christmas, I can't help but to give him praise. He allowed us to be partakers of his divine nature. Yeah, glory to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He came down, son. And he gave me the power to partake of his divinity. That means I have to raise up my humanity to walk in my divinity. That I can't walk by sight, I got to walk by faith. That I have to start thinking like a God. Because my father is the creator of all creation. And he has to raise me up to think like him. My thoughts are his thoughts. My ways are his ways. The Bible said, let the wicked forsake his ways. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. For he will have mercy upon him and he will abundantly pardon. God's ways are my ways. Because I've taken on my father's nature. 
That's why I celebrate Christmas because I'm not what I used to be. I'm not in the place where I used to be. I'm not doing the things that I used to do. I'm not going to the places I used to go. I'm not saying the things that I used to say. There's a change that has come over me. Hallelujah to God. Thank you for the victory. That's why I celebrate Christmas. There's nothing nobody in this earth real could give me that can compare to the gift of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Amen to that. He is my greatest gift Amen to that. of all times in the past, present, and in the future to come. I will have no great, I love my husband, but he ain't my greatest gift. I love Amen. my children, but they are not my greatest Amen gift. My greatest gift, Gerald, is the gift of salvation. Amen. He allowed me to be a partaker of his divine nature. Amen. He's raised me up to sit in heavenly places. And not only that, he became flesh. To walk it out to show me how to do it. Hallelujah. To walk it out to show me how to do it. That this thing is possible. Yeah. That I'm 100% divine and I'm 100% human. Amen. But yet without sin. Yes. Come boldly to the throne of grace. We have not a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity, but in all points was tempted just as we are yet without sin. He showed us that it could be done, Elder. I'm not suggesting that you're never going to make a mistake, but I'm suggesting to you that your humanity not overshadow your divinity. That your mind ought to be transformed enough that you're not leaning and bending and blending to the ways of this world. Right. But you're representing the King of Kings Hallelujah. and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. And you ain't feeling no way about it. Amen to that. You're not feeling dejected. You're not feeling sad and downtrodden in your spirit because you didn't celebrate Christmas the way the world did. Right. You don't feel no way about it. In fact, if anything, you feel great about it. Because you truly got the epigenosis of what Christmas is. On the day showers of blessings, we come to challenge you in your theology. Yes. I know many of us have celebrated Christmas in so many ways, shapes, forms, and fashions. I submit to you it probably wasn't until I was about 37, 35 years old until I had my own day of reckoning. But it wasn't nobody preaching not to do Christmas the way the world was doing it either. I didn't hear nobody right. talking about that. No, no, no. We didn't know any better and because we didn't know any better, LaDasia, we didn't do, we didn't do any better. Yeah. But the Bible says, Joe, when you know to do right and you do it the night, it is a sin. Amen. Amen. You got to know to do better and you got to actually do it. If you don't do it, you just, you just gnosis. Yeah. When you know to do and you don't do, yeah. it's gnosis. Yes. Yeah. God is moving us from gnosis to epigenosis. Amen to that. Thank you for the victory. It's not enough to know. Amen. Thank you for the I'm going to stop because I, I hear James said, be not just a hearer of the word. Be a doer. But be a doer of the word. Yeah. You're like a man who going into a glass and, and looking into the mirror and walk away and forget what manner of man he is. Yeah. 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 You can't just hear the word. The word is blessed for the doer. Amen. Thank you. You have to do it. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Thank you for the it's not just enough for you to be willing. Got a whole lot of willing folk that don't do anything. Yeah. Isaiah said willing and obedient. Yeah. Thank you for the victory. You'll eat the good of the land. And some of us, we charge God foolishly because we're not eating the good of the land. But you're not a doer. You're just a hearer. Yeah. The world hears the word, but it doesn't do it. Amen to that. You're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Amen to that. But if you refuse and rebel, mm. you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Amen to that. People of God, we come to challenge your theology. Amen to that. Amen. And it gets very challenging after being embedded and ingrained in a behavior for decades. Yeah. But the word of God says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. That strengthens me. Some of you will be a living epistle to your families. Hallelujah. And you will have to go and stand before them and say, I'm not participating in this capacity. That's right. That's right. You have to be willing to take a stand for righteousness. Yeah. yeah. Because if we're just doing it the way the world, the world has not blended to the church. No. They haven't blended. Nope. They're doing what they do. Yeah. What are we doing though? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Are we promoting Christ or are we promoting presence? Wow. Right. Right. What are we doing? Yeah. Yeah. And I come to challenge you yeah. to think about what I'm saying. Have a Selah moment about this. Amen to that. So this year will be like a year like no other. Yeah. And you will teach your children and your children's children the significance of Christmas. Somebody declare, there is no Christmas. There is no Christmas. Without Christ. Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. We pray that you are blessed by the message. If you were, please like, share, comment, and definitely subscribe. Or if you would like to order this message in its entirety, please go to our website at www.sbfaithcity.org and there you can sign up to partner with us for the Gathering of the Eagles where you'll receive all the messages in their entirety for Wednesday and Sunday. I promise you won't be disappointed. But remember, here at Showers of Blessings, we want you to be blessed.